If you're going to grow plants indoors with an HPS, metal halide or CDM light, the system you choose will require a ballast to operate. But why exactly is a ballast needed? What are the different options available? Which is the best to use? And how do you correctly set one up? This video will answer all of your questions. Every HPS, metal halide and CDM lighting system is made up of a reflector, a grow lamp and a ballast. It's the job of the ballast to regulate the amount of power that goes to the lamp. Without a suitable version of this vital piece of equipment, the lamp will either fail to ignite or worse, explode. However, by using one of our approved models, you'll be just fine. At the moment, there are two types of ballast to choose from, magnetic and digital. How do they differ and which one is right for you? Let's take a look. Magnetic ballasts have been around for many years now and still prove to be solid and reliable for HPS and metal halide lamps. They use what's known as a choke, a steel core with a metal wire coil around it to create an electromagnetic field that regulates the output voltage. Whilst their buy price remains lower than digital ballasts, magnetic ballasts do cost more to run over time. And due to the rate of degradation, you'll need to replace a magnetic ballast sooner than a digital ballast. We'd suggest every two to three years for maximum performance. Comparatively speaking, digital ballasts are the modern option using solid state circuitry to transform and regulate the power output to the lamp. This leads to increased efficiency and energy savings of three to 4% a major plus point that really pays off in multi-light rooms. Digital ballasts offer a number of convenient features, which normally includes manual dimming, and for HPS systems, a wattage boosting overdrive setting, as well as being more compact, lighter, cooler running, and quieter than magnetic ballasts. They're longer lasting too, typically operating for 10 years and over. It's also important to mention that digital ballasts provide a consistent level of light that's unaffected by different voltage ranges or any fluctuations in the main supply. And for HPS and metal halide lamps, they're high frequency, enabling you to enjoy better light output, a longer lamp life, and more accurate color rendering. In terms of the commercial greenhouse market, digital ballasts have long been a part of professional lighting systems, with Gavita products being a standout example. And that speaks volumes. Taking inspiration from these serious all-in-one units, some of the latest remote digital ballasts also now connect up to a controller, often in huge numbers if required. Here you get precise, automated dimming based on your target temperatures, not to mention access to special modes like sunrise and sunset functions and the ability to create separately managed zones or groups of lights. For all of these reasons, we highly recommend opting for a digital ballast. Even the disadvantage of being slightly more expensive than a magnetic ballast is counteracted by cost savings achieved through greater energy efficiency over time. Check out our Bay 6 range for the best value ballasts on the market. Alternatively, if you want temperature controlled lighting, consider Parlux Lynx equipment. Whichever type of ballast you choose to use, you can look forward to a simple setup. Just make sure the wattage rating matches up with that of your lamp and both are compatible types of lighting equipment. For example, pair a 600 watt HPS or metal halide lamp with a 600 watt ballast or a 315 watt CDM lamp with a 315 watt CDM ballast. In the case of digital ballasts, the same is true about matching the wattages even if the ballast has lower wattage dimmer settings. Ideally, place your ballast on top of a slab or brick. Failing that, a hard bare floor will work, as long as it's not on wood flooring. Some models can even be mounted to a wall if that's preferred. You need the unit to be within easy reach of your reflector and a main socket or extension lead and nowhere near anything that might leak. Generally speaking, you should try and keep the ballast outside of your tent or room in hotter months to give more space to plants and help keep temperatures down as these products do generate some heat. In winter, when the cold hits hard, consider bringing it closer to your growing area for a bit of added warmth. Put the cable from the reflector into the relevant cable connector on your ballast, then plug the ballast into a main socket. You'll need to attach the included IEC lead and plug to do this on a digital ballast. For a digital model with a dimmer, choose the desired wattage setting before turning on the power. If you want to put your lighting system on a timer, Combine with a suitable contactor or select a timer or combined timer contactor capable of handling the power load of your light. 
Our heavy-duty timer proves ideal for single light rooms. Lynx ballasts don't need a timer or contactor if being used with a Parlux Master Controller. That's basically it. Now there are a couple of things we'd like to draw your attention to when it comes to ballasts. If you're running a dimmable digital ballast with an HPS or metal halide lamp and want to change the wattage setting, always turn off the light and then adjust as necessary to avoid damaging the lamp. Also, never use the overdrive function on a dimmable digital ballast for a metal halide lamp. This could have disastrous consequences. On a side note, if you're new to indoor gardening and considering buying an LED light from us, you will not need a separate ballast. The power is handled by a driver directly attached to the fixture for every product in our range. So that's what we think you need to know about ballasts. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and we'll try our best to answer. Don't forget to give us a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe to our channel for more high quality, regularly released content.